we can only talk in terms of how that reality is felt by an individual. So that if we're going to believe in our everyday reality, then there's just as much reason to believe in the very powerful mystical experiences that people have had. Well, this is where we, we really have to clarify something fundamental. In our culture, since Descartes and Galileo, there's been a separation of the subjective and the objective. And uh, that is, uh, for me, a very destructive separation. That separation of what could be measured and observed from what could not was the means by which post-Renaissance science simplified, understood, and took control of the world. But that very triumph has left us, according to biologist Brian Goodwin, with a phony war. The narrowing that occurred in the Renaissance with respect to the way of acquiring reliable knowledge of nature, that is, focusing on quantities and the mathematizable relationships between them so that we can predict and control, has had a concomitant effect on our view of ourselves. It's not just nature that is reduced to mechanism, we are reduced to a mechanism. And the consequence of that is that uh, we now have a situation in our culture where we essentially split in two. There's the part which is objective and real and mechanical the neurons and the cells and the metabolism and the stuff that science says is real. Then there's the subjective part, which is regarded as epiphenomenal, unreal, subjective illusion. And yet we live our lives primarily in terms of that domain. The things that we value most in our lives, our relationships with others, our feelings, and our intuitions. To have those denied is to actually enter into a serious pathology. And I think that now has become one of the, the, the deep dangers of this cultural split, and it needs to be healed. Why would he bother? Why would, why would he bother? This all-knowing, all, -knowing, but all every, great... But every question, you know, why, every answer you receive, you could say, why? Why is the sky blue? And yeah, you get yeah, the scientific yeah, answer, and they go, but in, why? In the idea of God, you know, why. if I was God, all right, so it's all very beautiful, and you watch sort of Richard Attenborough, David Attenborough, whichever the wildlife guy is, you know, and he's fighting this, this, these beautiful things and stuff, but you still think to yourself, yeah, that's really funky, but you think, this God ain't just powerful, he's all-powerful. By definition, he knows everything, he's omni-everything. Why bother creating humans, man? You know, or flowers, or, you know, I'm, I don't know what better things you'd have to do, but I can think, I don't think we are close in any way to to the so-called, at least, Christian God's yeah, image. I you know, we're, we're a million miles away. We are skeptical of God because we have been conditioned to look for proof. But modern science finds there is much more in the world than simply God, which has eluded tidy scientific conclusions. The simplest thing is to assume that something is either true or false, black or white, one or zero. It's a perfectly natural way to begin. The trouble is to take that too seriously, which has all too often happened not just in science, but throughout Western culture, in our very thinking, you're either my friend or not, you're with us or against us. There's a kind of binary instinct that we have, and it favors action. If you're going through an intersection of a car very quickly, you have to decide whether to slam on the brakes or not at some hard black or white point. So binary logic is a good place to begin, but we don't want to end there. And unfortunately, a lot of Western reasoning, from philosophy to modern science, has tried to copycat simple mathematical reasoning. Cosco is a pioneer of a new reasoning system called fuzzy logic, which is at the cutting edge of making computers more intelligent. 
He believes that science's desire for objective certainty has deep and subjective cultural roots. We want something we can't have. We want certainty with our statements. We want to say that when the sky is blue, that, that statement is as true as one plus one equals two, or the statement that all bachelors are unmarried men. If we look at the structure of Western philosophy and belief systems, it comes down to the Greeks who first codified the logic chopping of either or, black or white reasoning, of something either is true or is not true. For Kozka, the way forward is to look to those other cultures, like Buddhism, which do not share our obsession with binary, black or white logic. Some of the parables of the Buddha, the way to insight is to break through the false black and white world of words and see the world as it is, highly uncertain, transient, nonlinear, in shades of gray, without things being artificially true or false or this or that. In short, breaking every Santa Claus assumption that we make in modern science and mathematics. Simply won't do as a cultural fiat to say that everything is black or white just because that's how early scientists proceeded. We can do better than that now. Kozko's fuzzy logic is his way of doing better. The new system goes beyond conventional digital binary logic to handle these uncertainties. Fuzzy logic captures how we reason with shades of gray. And outside of mathematics or politics, there are very few issues that are black and white. So if you want to understand the world and how we reason about it, you're forced to confront uncertainty at the very level of truth. That something is 80% true and 20% false. That a pink rose is 80% red and 20% not red, for example. We never have total information. When information we do have is highly uncertain, shot through with errors, it's safe to assume half of what we know is false, we don't know which half. What we do think is true, we don't know to what degree it's true. And we're forced by necessity to work with that highly uncertain, fuzzy data, and to that extent we reason in a fuzzy way. The more interesting question, though, is whether the world itself is shot through with uncertainty. One of the things that physicists have had to live with for the last 70 years is what's known famously as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Um, it's touching at something very big and very profound, and it's saying that um, at the heart of physics, and therefore I would argue at the heart of everything, there is inherent uncertainty. You cannot know everything absolutely all the time. And that's the way the world is. And you may not like it. And I know people who don't like it. I know people who've said that Heisenberg's law should be taken off the statute book because it ain't right. But it is right. It is there. And you either live with it or you go mad. And if there can be no final certainty about nature, should we be surprised that there can be no final certainty about God? For George Steiner, one of the foremost cultural critics in the world, living without certainty is a strength, not a weakness. There is a great discipline for those who try to remain in unknowing, in not knowing. Um, it is a discipline of, yes, of respect in front of what the questions really are. I would like to emphasize this. One possible definition of what we call God is the respectful acknowledgement of the extreme limitation of our own means of understanding. Could put it that way. This is also of the essence to me of philosophy. Um, Heidegger makes a wonderfully simple, brutal distinction. Why is science such nonsense? Because it has answers. And that overstates it, but it's worth thinking about. But after 400 years of scientific and cultural commitment to the ideals of a black and white clockwork universe, we face a revision of far more than just science. 
proof as the mark of respectability, is deeply embedded throughout our culture.